Okay, part three, activities that can be used for any grammar point. Um, sorry about that, the camera shut down unexpectedly last time because of memory card full. But uh, I think I was just finishing up talking about find someone who. Uh, I was just talking about the students can make their own questions. So this is a worksheet on the present perfect. Uh, they write the positive statements here, and then the question form, have you ever, verb three, they make their own questions and they kind of go around the room and find someone who. Um, again, making the worksheet might be overkill. You could totally just give them a blank piece of paper and say, okay, make your own questions for find someone who using going to future or me using past simple or whatever, whatever the grammar point is. Okay, moving on to the next activity. Uh, find your partner. This is another classic one. Um, basically, you, uh, there are two matching halves. So you give kind of every student one card, one slip of paper. They stand up, they walk around the room, they talk to the people in the class, it's a mingle. They find somebody with a match. Now, I know this is activities that can be used for any grammar point, but find someone who admittedly works better with some grammar points more than others. It works good if there's a complementary sentence. So an active sentence matches with like a corresponding passive sentence. It also works well with sentences that can be split into two halves. For example, an if clause and a result clause. This example I have here is uh, past perfect for kind of background action. Sorry, past perfect. Past continuous for background action and then past simple. So I was swimming in the ocean when I was attacked by a shark. I was writing a story when my pencil broke. I was drinking milk when my friend made me laugh and the milk came out my nose. So, they each get one card. Some of them have the past continuous. Some of them have the past simple. They've got to find the matching person to make a sentence. Uh, usually the way I play it is uh, they all have to stand up. They can sit down when they get a match. Now, if you don't trust them to decide for themselves whether it's correct or not, you can check with the teacher first. Then I look at it and I say, yes, that's right. You can sit down. No, that's not right. Keep looking for your partner. And you kind of play until everyone has found their partner and everyone has sat down. Slight variation on this is find two partners. So instead of splitting the sentence in half, you split it into three parts. Uh, this is too many and too much with uh, countable and uncountable noun. And there are, there is. So for example, there are too many cars there is too much traffic. Uh, so they each get kind of one third of the sentence. They've got to find two other people to make a sentence that makes sense. Um, actually, I take back what I said earlier when I said this can only be used with certain types of grammar point. I think with a bit of thinking about this, you can kind of split any grammar point into two different cards. Um, subject-verb agreement, or I don't know. I, I, I think it can be done. Uh, but the obvious examples are sentences with two obvious halves, like if, result. Okay, uh, variation on this. Falling leaves. So you, either of these, either the two partners or the one partner, take the two partners, for example, you, put on colored paper, uh, so maybe five different colors. So like yellow, plain white, pink, blue, green. If you don't have colored paper at your school, you can photocopy them all on white paper and then take crayons and color them the different colors. Then you cut them all up, you shuffle all of them together, you assign different teams for the students, like green team, yellow team, blue team, 
you throw it up and ideally the cards will kind of float gently down to the ground like falling leaves. Although from experience I can tell you you have to kind of throw them just right otherwise they don't flutter down nicely they just plop down but whatever that's not the end of the world. The students then kind of gather up their colors. They've got to kind of find their colors from the, the mess. Uh, and then once they get all their colors and they sit down in their groups and then they kind of match the halves together in their groups. Okay, next activity, garbage man. Now at my school, garbage man is an old favorite, but I've noticed that there are actually two different versions of this game floating around at my school. Uh, some teachers think it's played one way, some people think it's played the other way. I'll give you both versions. You have some sort of a controlled practice kind of written here on different strips of paper. And this one, uh, you have to put in the verb. This could be useful almost anything. He, paint, picture. Let's say we're doing the present continuous. So you have to change this to he is painting a picture, she is washing the car, they are brushing their hair. Uh, again, it works best with different colors, so colored paper if you have it. Uh, if you don't have it, you can use crayons to color the paper. You cut up all the strips and crumple them up and maybe put them in some sort of a container, shake them up, and then throw them all on the floor like you're the garbage man kind of emptying out the wastebasket. Then the students have to run and pick up from the floor the colors for their team. So red team picks up the red crumpled paper, yellow team picks up the yellow crumpled paper. They can only pick up one at a time, they take it back to their group, they uncrumple it, they write the correct sentence, Teacher goes and checks, and if it's correct, then they can go and grab the next one. Uh, they keep going until they've cleaned up all of their paper from the floor. So acting like metaphorical garbage men in the game, kind of picking up their trash. And then once they've kind of picked up all their trash and kind of solved all the sentences, then they win the game. So that's one version. The other version that other teachers do is in reverse. So you cut these all up, but you don't crumple them. You give them to the students kind of uh, nicely in strips. The students solve the sentences, write the correct answer, and then once the teacher checks it, then they crumple it up and throw it on the floor. So as the game goes on, the, the trash on the floor gets more and more and more instead of less and less and less. And in this game, this team that finishes last has to be the garbage men and kind of go around and kind of pick up all the garbage on the floor as kind of like a punishment for losing the game. Okay, uh, the next one is kind of something I picked up in Japan. Uh, if you've ever taught in Japan, you know this one. Uh, in Japanese, they pronounce it culture. Uh, sorry, that's wrong. So I, I never learned how to say the liquid consonant in Japanese right. Karuta, kaluta, sorry. It's grab the card. Uh, it's a grab the card game. So basically, the way it works is there are two students. They have these cards kind of sitting between them, face up. They've got their hands behind their back, waiting. The teacher reads out a prompt and they grab the card that matches that prompt. And the first person to grab the card gets to keep it. And at the end of the game, whoever has got the most cards is the winner. Uh, you may have to add some rules like, you know, if you grab the wrong card, you lose a point because sometimes students just start grabbing everything. Um, yeah, you, sometimes you have to watch them and make sure they don't grab early. Uh, you can kind of spice up the rules as you go. Now, this works best for vocabulary. Uh, I use this all the time with kind of the young children. I give them kind of picture cards. 
I say the word, they grab the picture card. However, it can also be used for grammar. Uh, if you, yes, depending on the grammar point, uh, you can either split the sentence into two halves, again, kind of if have, if clause, result clause. So I read one half of the sentence and they grab the second half. Or kind of matching sentences, like I read the active sentence, they grab the corresponding passive sentence. I say the present simple verb, they grab the past simple verb. Or, this is what I have here, uh, I read the situation, they grab the card with the target grammar on it. This is for modals and semimodals. It's kind of a review of modals and semimodals. So I read the situation. The situation is I failed the test. They have to find the sentence in the target language that matches that situation. In this case, it's I should have studied harder. So whoever grabs I should have studied harder is the winner. Okay, moving on. Grammar auction. Uh, grammar auction is another classic game. Uh, the setup of this can vary a little bit and sometimes it gets a little bit complicated. So let me give you one example of how to set it up and a number of different variations on this are possible. So each team has $100. Some teachers kind of give them play money so that they can, you know, have the, have the play money to kind of physically do the auction. Uh, I usually prefer to just kind of write the number up on the whiteboard. Like you have a hundred dollars, I'm writing 100 up on the whiteboard. That's your team's money. Uh, I prefer it that way, number one, because it's easier than getting play money. And number two, I think it helps the game if the teams can kind of see each other's points. So they, they, they know who has what dollars and they can plan their strategy, strategy better. So they have a certain amount of money, and once that money is gone, it's gone. They can't get more money. You read to them sentences in the target language. Some are perfectly correct, no mistakes. Some have mistakes on it. They, want, they get one point for every correct sentence that they buy. So you read a sentence and you auction it off and they bid, I'll, I'll pay $5 for that sentence, $6 for that sentence, $10 for that sentence, you know, just like, just like an auction. Whichever team bids the highest, wins the auction, gets to buy that sentence, and then you tell them, okay, this sentence is correct or it's incorrect. If it's correct, they get one point. If it's incorrect, they don't get anything. They've, they've wasted their money. Uh, and there's a bit of strategy involved because at the end of the game, you don't get, you don't win by saving money. The, the money is meaningless at the end of the game. It's just the points you get from the sentences that determine whether you win. But you have to strategize with your money so that you don't use it all too quickly. Uh, there are a lot of variations on this. Uh, some teachers pay, play it that you get points for the incorrect sentences if you can fix them. So you get one point for a correct sentence, you get two points for an incorrect sentence if you can identify it as incorrect and fix it. So if you say, okay, that sentence is incorrect, you fix it like this, then, then that's two points. Um, sometimes for simplicity's sake, I find it easier to just kind of bet on the sentence. Uh, that way you don't have to do the whole mess of an auction, which kind of does take a bit of setup and a bit of time. So he here's an example of a uh, grammar auction thing I did that was actually betting. So there's a bunch of different sentences here. In their groups, they have to decide, is this sentence correct? Yes or no? And then how many points do you want to bet? that you've got it correctly. Uh, so you say this sentence is correct, tick yes, and I'm gonna bet 10 points because I'm really sure it's correct. Or this sentence is not correct, I'm gonna bet five points. And you can just do it as a betting game instead. I, either way would work. Okay, 
Moving on, the next activity is called grass skirts. It's kind of a funny name, but it gets its name from those kind of Hawaiian grass skirts. Actually, it's probably more of a stereotype, but you know what I mean. So you cut these along the lines almost up to the top, but you leave a strip here. So each of these is kind of dangling from the top here as if it were kind of a Hawaiian grass skirt. And this is kind of hanging up on the wall or maybe just outside the class. They, in teams, the students run up, tear off a piece, take it back to their groups, fix it or write the correct answer or complete the sentence or whatever the control practice is, and then show it to the teacher. Uh, in this case, this is a, I think this is question tags, and they just have to write, fill in the blank. It could be unscrambling the sentence, complete the sentence, whatever. Uh, the teacher says okay, then they get to run up and rip off the next one, and whichever team kind of finishes their grass skirts first is the winner. Okay, next one is the guess my sentence game. Um, now, there are two versions of this. Uh, one is where you have a mystery sentence and you have to make clues in the target language. This is studying modals again. So for example, the situation is, I failed my test. The clues are, I should have studied harder. I should have listened to the teacher. I shouldn't have watched so much TV. So you read these clues to your partner and they have to guess what your sentence is. The first few are an example. Afterwards, the students have to write their own clues and then give these clues to their partner. Uh, in this case, the situation is just neutral and the clues all have to be written in the target grammar. It is possible to reverse this have the mystery sentence be in the target grammar, and then the clues can be in whatever grammar. So either way, either the mystery sentence is in the target grammar, or the clues are in the target grammar, or maybe both, I don't know. Okay, next. Guess your partner's answers. So, you have a series of prompts in the target language, you have to answer them for yourself, and you also have to guess what your partner is gonna answer. So here's one with can, can't, could, couldn't. So I can drive a car. Five years ago, I could drive a car. I can ice skate. Five years ago, I could ice skate. Uh, actually, these sentences aren't great. Sorry, this is an old worksheet. Um, you fill it out for yourself, you also fill it out for your partner. Then you read out the answers to your partner and uh, you, you get one point for every time you correctly guessed what your partner's answers are. Uh, this one actually isn't so interesting. I, I've got another one uh, in my archives. Actually, I, I think I've got borrowed this from One Stop English, which is much more useful uh, with used to. So, for example, when, I was, when my partner was a child, she used to, and then you have to kind of make some sort of guess about what your partner used to do after school when she was a child. And then you kind of check your guesses with your partner. So you, you can actually make them more interesting that way. Uh, and again, it can be used for any kind of grammar point. Okay, next. Uh, hangman, kind of, uh, although actually the way I usually play this is not really hangman because nobody gets hung, but it's kind of the same idea. Uh, you put up, so you know hangman, right? Well, maybe you don't, I shouldn't assume anything. You write blanks, like uh, if it's uh, a word like dog, you'd write three blanks. And then somebody has to guess letters, like, is there an A in your word? And if there is an A, you kind of write it in. 
And if there isn't an A, traditionally in hangman, uh, they would get one part of their body added to some sort of person on a scaffold who's getting hung. Sorry, it's a bit of a macabre game, but I didn't make it. Uh, that's a traditional game. Uh, and if you can draw the whole person being hung, then you lose. Uh, I use this for kind of full sentences with a target language. So, for example, going to. Uh, I am going to the cinema tonight. Instead, but you don't write it on the board. You just write blank, 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 blank. And I, I kind of leave a space between words. So there's one blank for I, space, two blanks for am. Now, when you first put this up, the students are like, what? We've got to guess all that? But actually, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but the more, the longer the sentence is, the easier it is to guess. Because uh, it means that the more letters there are, so you've got a better chance of kind of getting the correct letter when you make a guess, and then the more letters you get up on the board, the easier it is to guess subsequent letters. So I usually play this. I, I don't actually hang somebody. I just say, guess a letter, you get one point for every time that letter comes up in the sentence. So for example, if you guess E, and you say, okay, there's an E here, E here, E here, and an E over here, that's four E's, your team gets four points. Uh, and then the other team gets a guess. Uh, if, if the letter doesn't come at up at all, you don't get any points, but if it comes up, you get one point for each time it comes up. Uh, and if you at any point can guess the sentence, then you get 10 points for correctly guessing the sentence. So you can say, teacher, I know the answer. I'm going to guess the sentence. Sometimes to, to discourage frivolous guessing, I add in a penalty. Like if you, if you attempt to guess the sentence, but you guess it wrong, you lose 10 points. Sometimes you have to do that, otherwise they just try to guess the sentence every single time. So it is a little bit of one of these kind of long, drawn-out games, um, but I do think it has kind of some value uh, because they, especially for kids, if they can get into the game and they really want to win against the other team, then they start kind of like analyzing the target grammar for the patterns. They're like, you know, like for, I don't know, going to. They're like, okay, going to always has the be verb plus a going to plus a to. So, uh, you know, we can always guess kind of G and O and I and G. Uh, they're always looking to analyze the patterns for the grammar. It's, it's good for maybe noticing. It's also fun. They enjoy it. Um, I've been thinking, though, I think the way I play it, it's maybe closer to Wheel of Fortune. I mean, not exactly Wheel of Fortune because you're not buying vowels and all that kind of stuff, but you're still kind of guessing sentences. Nobody's getting hung. Teams are competing against each other. I don't know. Call it what you want. Hangman for full sentences. Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Next one. This is hot potato. Uh, hot potato sentences. So... Uh, the students sit in a circle. You start off with a prompt. Now, this one is for using should. Target grammar is should. And there's a whole bunch of situations here in which the students have to give advice to the person who has a situation. So, for example, my mother is angry at me. So, you should apologize to her. You should buy her flowers. Uh, you shouldn't have been a bad son. You, I don't know. Uh, oh, you have to make a sentence using should. And we go around the circle, and you are not allowed to repeat any sentence that another student has said before. And also we put like a time limit on it. Like I, you know, I kind of silently count down to five with my hands. You have to make up a new sentence with before five seconds. Otherwise, you lose a point or, I don't know, whatever the penalty is. Sometimes I have a, like a seat in the middle and they have to go and sit in the middle. And then we play again and then whoever gets out the next time has to sit in the middle. 
Um, so this is for should, but again, with a bit of creativity, it could be adapted to any grammar point. Things you are going to do after class, things you have done, um, etc. The, the way I just described, uh, it kind of keeps going, and as long as you don't take more than five seconds, and as long as you kind of get a new sentence every time, you're fine. But to make it more interesting, you can kind of play it more like traditional hot potato. So there's like a ball or something, anything that the students have to hold. Uh, you put on music and you stop the music at random points. And who's ever holding the hot potato when you stop the music is out. And then they have to sit in the middle or whatever. So uh, they can't pass the hot potato on until they say the next sentence. And if you go to YouTube, there are like uh, YouTube clip, YouTube videos for playing hot potato. The, the, it's not much of a video, it's just like a song. It'll play the song and then the song will just stop at random points. So then you don't have to stop it yourself, it's just a video will stop the song at different points. Okay. Next one. Uh, next one is human bingo. It's kind of this similar idea to find someone who. So this one is to contrast the present simple with the present continuous. So find someone who gets up at seven. Uh, find someone who is wearing black shoes. Now, just like find someone who, in this version, the students have to make the question form themselves and change the subject verb agreement from third person to second person. So, find someone who gets up at seven would be, do you get up at seven? Uh, again, if you wanted to make it easier for them, you could just write in the questions yourself. And, and in this case, they have to make the question form. Uh, and it's just like find someone who, if you find someone who can say yes, then you can write their name down. Uh, but the, the difference is this time you're trying to make a bingo sheet. So you want five in a row across or five in a row up and down or five in a row diagonally. Uh, the middle one can be free or it cannot be free. Or the students could write their own question in here. And anything's okay. Slight variation on this. Uh, if you're contrasting a couple different grammar points, you can do same or different. So this one is for future plans. They write down, am going to, am not going to, or may. So I blank watch TV tonight. I'm going to watch TV tonight. I'm not going to watch TV tonight. I may watch TV tonight. So in this case, they compare answers with a classmate. And if they find someone who has the same answer as them, they write an S. If they find someone who has a different answer than them, they write a D. And they try and get either five S's or five D's in a row. Uh, but it needs to be, you can't have like S, D, S, D, S. Uh, it needs to be like five in a row of the same. Okay, we're coming up on the time limit here, so I've got so much more to get through, but we'll just have to add that to a part four. So stay tuned for part four coming next.